For the benefit of the public, can you give a summary of your expectations and how the financial records were maintained and what you and your team encountered uh, when you came on board? Well, when I came on board, they had a, um, a consulting firm, an outside consulting firm, maintaining their finance office, which is something that I was unaccustomed to. Usually the all the municipalities I've been in have their own in-house uh, finance, financial staff. Um, so uh, naturally, you know why I was brought here, because it wasn't so much that the records were in poor condition, it was that the city was suffering some very ser serious fiscal distress, and they had uh, quite a bit of overexpenditures, and they ended the year in a deficit. Um, and one of the uh, problems that I had uh, in trying to discern exactly where we stood was the fact that there were a lack of internal controls and there were a lack of accounting processes and systems. Um, in fact, I didn't, uh, my, in looking back, um, I think that it's been a long time since the city actually knew their accurate financial posture. Uh, so after several months, as you know, I decided that it was time to, to um, establish an in-house financial staff. Uh, so it's people that were employed by the city, paid by the city, and would have a, a vested interest in, in uh, uh, implementing good systems in the finance office. And uh, we have since moved forward with that. Uh, we have a lot of new systems in accounting. We have some new technology there. There is improved internal controls. And the one thing that is the best result of all that it has been that we have accurate numbers. Uh, while not everybody likes the numbers, right. at least we know exactly at this point what it costs to run this city in its present condition with the present employees. Okay. So accuracy and, and also the ability to produce timely reports has been the results of our hard work over the last year. Okay. Well, let's revisit that a little bit more because I think people might be interested in some of the illustrations around uh, even like, you know, what the ch changes were along the side of the technical stuff and things that really didn't exist. I think that there's a, a tremendous void of understanding in the community on what you guys faced when you got here. Um, on another level, although the budget process has now begun on the council side and it's just getting underway, the calendar's reality is moving ahead rapidly. I'm sure you know that better than anybody. What's your overall sense of the impact on the overall numbers as in the budget that's already been presented by Nick Trisanti? Uh, well, um, as you know, the, the, the uh, um, municipality and the budget is a very dynamic environment and numbers change. The numbers that are in the uh, introduced budget uh, reflect the accuracy of, like I said, the, the, the current staff that we have and their current salaries. Um, it also reflects the programs that um, the directors have told us that they plan for the 2010 year. Prior to putting that budget together, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, Nick and I met with each director several times. And Nick, more than I, uh, went over every single line item. Okay. One of the things that we did that really is going to serve the city well in many years to come is that Nick uh, uh, developed uniform budget sheets for every department to use. They didn't have that before. And that, that's problematic. So every department head uses the same budget forms. It breaks down in much, much greater detail than ever had before what the expenditures are. Okay. It breaks them down by program, uh, it breaks them down by cost of each program, and it's really terrific. And, um, and that, is, that enables us to get a much better picture of where the money is being spent, and it will also provide a much better picture for council. Because in the past, I don't think council had this kind of detailed information to make intelligent management decisions. Yeah, I think there was a huge gap there. But there's definitely some more questions along the lines of, of those things that you're speaking about, and I think I'll, I'll get into those more specific ones shortly. Um, 
How do you define your role, though, in a more general sense in the process now? I mean, a lot of your hard work and team's work has really been um, getting up to speed. At this point now, it's partially moving towards the elected officials, the city council and the mayor. What leeway do you see here in terms of what their impact is going to be on the budget? And how does the accountability of them being an elected official versus you being appointed um, by the state play into your thinking? Well, as far as, you know, statutory uh, requirements, I still, ha still am responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. It's very different, though, now with Mayor Zimmer here, an elected mayor and, a, and an elected council. Uh, I don't have to um, uh, play that great of a role. It's more, it's more of me uh, not governing myself as it is working with them and teaching them how to govern. So I see myself more in an advisory role than an actual uh, benevolent dictatorship, if you will. Okay. Uh, and uh, when you mentioned the teaching aspect, I mean, is there something that you've done or Nick, you know, from, or from a team standpoint informally about trying to have that knowledge transfer passed on? Absolutely. I mean, we work with council. Uh, I've, I've been in contact with them many times. We've had meetings here. Uh, Nick has met with them certainly more than I have, and we help them understand how this budget process works. I'm sure you know at some of the meetings, uh, uh, now Councilman Lenz uh, is trying to um, explain this process. Well, we were the ones who explained it to Councilman Lenz and several other council people, um, uh, you know, all the statutory requirements. Um, the, the actual timetables, what has to be done when. Okay. And, and certainly Nick and I are available, uh, you know, at the, at, at, at whenever they need us for that. Nick, Nick, of course, attends all the meetings and, and is more an advisory role, but I certainly have a lot of correspondence via email uh, with council. I still give them advice. Okay. I, I'm in constant contact with the mayor, talking about different issues, giving them different options on the budget. Uh, and. And I still have play a big role with the personnel on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. I'm still working with the civil service system. You know, I'm 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 uh, not say running the day-to-day -day operations with the mayor, but you know, trying to solve problems as they come up. Right. Okay. And um, you know, getting input wherever the mayor needs it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I was curious. You know, I I think Michael Lenz has some municipal background, I guess that's helped some of the communications or has that helped lighten the load of, you know, trying to help people to understand? Yes, yeah, so Michael does have some background in that, um, but I have 30 years of experience, so I'm, I'm, I'm more of a heavyweight and, uh, um, and I'm able to make a lot more recommendations. Okay. But it's, it's very important for me to say that, um, you know, the whole idea as I'm waning down my tenure here. Uh, and certainly there are some conditions under which the mayor will go before the local finance board and ask to be relieved of state supervision. I'm trying to, again, like I said, act in an advisory capacity and not only give them recommendations for the current year, mm -hmm. because of my vast experience, um, I can see into the future. So I'm trying to look at the city of Hoboken, not only on a one-year basis, but explain to them that their actions this year will have a very dramatic effect on the next few years. Nick and I have always judged this budget year in terms of a three and five year plan. I, I completely agree with you. And for the public's benefit, can you kind of explain, I think that people don't understand that when you're dealing with uh, an organization and a budget of this size, particularly when you have also union employees largely driving the employee costs, how hard it is to, in a sense, turn the corner that it's not something you can do in even one calendar year, or in this particular sense, we're already well into a calendar year from last summer. Can you kind of speak to that a bit? Sure. Um, you know, this city has had its issues for the last 15, 20 years. The, the, the condition that it, it got to was not done in, in one day or one year. It's, it's, a, it's a recurrence. Even even with the unions, we talked about this many times, that all the benefits that have been gotten over the years were gotten just that over the years, not in one year. 